Hey people, in this episode I'm going to discuss two major stories of great historical figures who rose from a magical egg in two cultures set thousands of miles apart. Korea, King Hyok Jose and Queen Aryong, founders of Silla. The first legend concerns ancient Korea where, among others, a fantastic tale was recorded in the Sankuk Yusa, a collection of old tales and narrations regarding the former kingdoms. It's about King Hyok Chose, the legendary founder of the Silla Empire, who was sent to Earth as a baby child. As the legend recounts in 69 BC, in the city known today as Gyeongchu, the chieftains of previously separate and scattered clans held a meeting at the stream of Alchan and agreed upon the plan to elect a true leader, a king who could work towards their common interests. As they climbed a high mountain, they even offered prayer to heaven to help them bring one who was worth the title. Doing so, they witnessed a lightning flash and a rainbow in the distance reaching down from the sky to earth at a well called Najeong. At the same spot, a white horse was seen interacting with an object. Not an ordinary horse, but something special, as it turns out later. When they reached the well, they heard a sound coming from the horse that ascended along the rainbow in the sky, leaving behind a large red egg. When it cracked, a baby boy emerged with shining face. Needless to say, the people rejoiced and named him King Hyok Chose, literally bright ruler. Soon after the event, another divine arrival took place on the same day when a dragon came down from the sky and left a baby girl at another well, that of Aryun Chong. What stood out special was that her mouth was covered by a beak of a chick, but after a thorough wash in a stream nearby, it fell off, revealing her lips. They named her Queen Aryong after the well, and she became the spouse of King Hyuk Chosen. It's not a coincidence that it all took place at the rooster forest, known by the locals as Gyarim, where many royals had been burying along sculptures of a chicken. Throughout the ancient world, we find cults centered on bird gods with beaks. Central American cultures are especially well known for gods wearing bird helmets, and some, like the Aztec god of wind, Ehecatl, have peculiar, almost mechanical looking beaks with knobs and protrusions resembling breathing devices. The records speak of how Hyokchosi was given the family name Pak, the native word for a board, as the egg that brought him looked just like one. Even today, the popular Korean surname Park carries his heritage. As for the white horse and the strange removable beak, both appear to refer to things seen in different cultures and apparently during similar contact with something from above. As for the egg in question, while there's no actual depiction of what it looked like, we do know of a precious artifact from Pekche, the former kingdom neighboring Silla. The incense burner is in the shape of a huge egg, held by a dragon below and engulfed in swirling patterns above. Moreover, there is a small but noticeable egg, placed atop, guarded by the mythical dragon rooster, which may be a glimpse into this scene. The white horse is a phenomenon that is present in places like India, Greece, Scandinavia, and England as well. In India it is known as Uch Chen Shrovas, in Greece as Pegasus, in Scandinavia as Sleipnir, and in England it appears as a huge prehistoric geoglyph on a hill at Uffington. In both Indian and Greek records it served as a kind of chariot of the gods and was much associated with lightning in Greek sources. It's interesting that the Korean one, called Cheon Ma, also appeared during the descent of a lightning when delivering the egg-shaped capsule. In fact, yet another record from Islam also mentions a white horse called Burak, which transported Prophet Muhammad during his celestial journey. Burak translates as lightning too. One of the ancient mounds at the capital of Silla, not far from the spot of the descent of the egg, apparently preserved Chianma's appearance and uh, depicts it in a strange manner with many legs ending in swirls, like tendrils, as if the whole was a floating cloud. On the other hand, the Nordic Sleipnir horse also has as many as eight legs. The same filament style is seen at the Uffington horse, and both stick out the tongue too. It appears that all witness the same phenomenon in the sky, namely 
either a solid craft or an extension of the lightning or a cord, and this fluffy extension as the ending of the lightning deposited the capsule and transported the gods as it became a mythical chariot. Greece, the four siblings, Helena of Troy, Castor and Pollux, and Clytemnestra. In search of the egg tradition in the West, ancient Greek literature has much to offer. The story of Leda narrates the pursuit of the lady by Zeus in the form of a swan, who, seeing her beauty, desired and seduced her. Their encounter took place at a spot called Remnus, where she produced an egg, or multiple eggs. When it hatched, it released the maiden Helen, one of the central characters in the legend of Troy, along with her siblings Castor and Pollux, or Polydeuchis, and Clytemnestra, as other versions include. In her time, Helen was thought of as the most beautiful lady in the ancient Hellenic world. Interestingly, in the opening chapter of the Bible, one finds similar accounts of the men of heaven longing for beautiful ladies on earth. At least three other variants of the Sega are known to us, and these are just as relevant in the light of comparison. The first one tells of a shepherd who discovered the egg and gave it to Leda. The second account by Sappho recounts that it was Leda who found it in the meadow. It is said that she found a jacinth-colored egg, or alternatively, they do say that once upon a time Leda found an egg hidden in the jacinth. The third one, however, speaks of goddess Nemesis giving the egg to Leda by Tyndareus, king of Sparta and foster father of the curious children. Nevertheless, each variant may be part of one complete story. But there is more to both legends. At the Mount of Scylla, richly decorated golden objects have been found. In general, the boomerang shapes left historians puzzled, but this historical comparison sheds a profound light on their possible meaning. Some have a bulbous part in the center, an astounding detail that may point to the global veneration of the co and bull of the sky found in ancient Korea too, constellation Taurus, much revered by the ancient Greek and Minoan civilization. If this comparison seems wild, then it's time to take another look at one of the Greek vases that shows the ritual horn hanging just above the celestial egg. Breakthrough What is about to follow is one of the most amazing depictions ever made. It not only shows the children rising from the egg, but also the other object that brought it from heavens. The relief found in the Hypogeum of Aguzano in Rome shows Helen and the brothers Castor and Pollux, or the Dioscori. They are surrounded by the broken shell they hatched from. But look at the detail just above them. Another egg-shaped flying phenomenon, but complete with an exhaust this time, carried by a majestic bird with childlike cherub angels riding the animal. This is the first time that the exhaust detail is depicted the way it is, a clearly carved outgassing of sorts, otherwise known in art as the Hand of God, a simplified depiction that symbolically uses fingers in place of the vapor and the wreath instead of the capsule shape, first decoded as such by author Wayne Herschel. In the oldest churches, the symbol appears high in the sky, placed among the stars. In a surprising twist, it turns out that this may be the same object described in an infamous chapter by Ezekiel, variously called Ezekiel's Wheel or the Glory of the Lord. This remark, however, leads us to yet another starting place of the puzzle. Castor and Pollux have been depicted in art wearing a conical hat, or pillows, also spelled Peleus. The tradition says that the cuffs are remnants of the eggs they hatched from, left on their heads as a type of title of their cosmic origins. The eggshells can be found on numerous coins of the time that show them with a star on top and snake-like ropes below placed within a wreath. The flying caps even have ribs that make them look like domed plates, a classic saucer shape, one could say. Taking all the pieces in the account, the message of the magnificent relief in Rome may just look like this.
The great bird here could be a substitute for the magical horse or swan. The comparison here shows the visual similarity of the two tales. Both speak of a whitish phenomenon and an egg laid by the creature. The hidden recourse team proposes that all these animals, especially the swirling, slender and fluffy ones, be it horse or swan this time, represent natural conduits of plasma, or magnetic lines, used for cosmic journeys. Subscribe and join the journey. Make sure to click the bell button to get notifications.